The new Prime Video documentary hoping to spark a political response to the climate crisis in Australia. It's called Burning, and it tackles the unprecedented, catastrophic Australian bushfires that set much of that country ablaze two years ago. It drew glo global attention at the time. We certainly reported on it here. Thousands of homes and businesses were torched in those fires. Some three billion wildlife are estimated to have perished, and now there is uh, a much anticipated and talked about political fallout as well. So we have the Oscar winning director behind the film, Eva Orner, joining us now. Eva, thanks for being here. And I believe if I have my time zones correctly, the greeting is good morning, right? No, it's actually evening. I'm in Rome, Italy. So okay. Thanks for having me. Of course. We really appreciate you being here. Uh, we, we've got to talk about this. Uh, so many people saw what happened in Australia as these bushfires were playing out. But your documentary certainly is much more than simply showing people wildfire video and telling some sad stories. So what can people expect to see beyond that when they watch this documentary? So the film's really a film about climate change and Australia's response to climate change. You know, Australia's a pariah in the climate change world and one of the worst countries with its record on dealing with climate change. And I thought a really good way of telling that story would be to do it by telling the story of what happened with these unprecedented fires that hit Australia in the summer of, uh, of 2019 and 2020. I, I know that Australia's prime minister skipped having a meeting uh, with a pretty prominent fire official before these bushfires happened. In the wake of all that and how rampant this destruction was, have you seen any action from the Australian government? I mean, there's been a little bit of almost forced action because of the recent uh, United Nations conference, the COP26 at Glasgow a couple of months ago. Australia was sort of pressured into, you know, coming up with a zero, a net zero emissions target for 2050. And the Prime Minister announced that just before the conference because of world pressure. But there's not really a plan to get there. There's no sort of legislation. There's no clear plan. So at this point, it's just a lot of words. And the other thing that Australia has not done is, you know, come up to a net zero target for 2030, which a lot of countries are doing, particularly Western and developed countries. So Australia coming out of the COP in Glasgow was very much lumped with some of the biggest climate villains in the world, like, you know, India, China, Russia, Brazil. And that's, I think, not what people would expect from Australia. We're, you know, we should be a much more progressive, advanced country. I think a lot of what you're saying, a lot of Americans would agree with in terms of how they're feeling about our own government's policies. How are everyday Australians calling for some of this change in climate policy. What are they gonna do? Are, are they getting more aggressive the longer we wait? Yeah, I mean, time will tell because there's an election coming up in Australia in the next three to six months. It hasn't been announced yet. And I guess we'll see how Australia collectively votes. But there has been a very strong move. People, one in four Australians were directly affected by these unprecedented fires. And there's a lot of activism. There's incredible student protests in Australia, which we really profile in the film. Our, our, our Greta Thunberg of Australia, Daisy Jeffries, is one of the people profiled in the film who really led some of those student uh, protests, but people are becoming more and more aware and also very aware that we have to end our incredible reliance on the fossil fuel industry and mining in Australia and switch to renewables. And we talk about that a lot in the film as well. And that's, again, something Australia should be a world leader in, but there's been an incredible political reluctance to do so. It's one thing to, to let people know that destruction is happening from severe weather or that some awful event has happened, but it doesn't necessarily feel tangible to people. They might just say, oh, that's a shame, the way they think any kind of environmental or, or weather event happens. Can you give us some tangible facts that has happened and the, the negative impacts of these fires now two years removed? I mean, I think what we're seeing is, you know, when the fires started, it was August, September in Australia, which is coming out of winter and going into spring. And usually the fires don't start till much later. And the fire season now is like a six, seven months season, while it used to maybe be three months. And so we're seeing a much different weather pattern, which we're also seeing in parts of America, particularly on the West Coast in California and further up the coast. So I think that's one of the things we're really seeing is just the hotter, drier weather is getting much more severe. And a result of that is just the scale of the fires are just off the charts of anything we've seen. But we've been predicting that this would happen for decades. And again, there's been this, it's been falling on deaf ears. This last question is probably a pretty obvious one, but I think you'll answer it more eloquently than I will. So I'm going to ask it anyway. 
Some Americans might see this documentary and say, that's really a shame that that's happening in Australia. I wish Australia luck. We have our own problems over here. Why should people care about what's happening in Australia, regardless of where they live? It's a really good question. And Australia is, is ground zero for climate change. It's a very, very vulnerable country to climate change. It's very dry. It's very flat. It has a very long history of droughts. And what we're seeing in Australia is what we're going to see everywhere else. And we are seeing that. You know, the Amazon fires, the California fires, the, the Oregon fires... This is going to happen in every planet. It's happening across Europe, in places that don't historically burn, in Canada. So this is a warning to the rest of the world about how serious this is and that it's not just isolated to one place. It's really we're going to see and we are seeing catastrophic weather changes and we, we have the technology now to deal with it. I know I said last question already, Eva, but I just got to ask. I know you say we can tackle it. Having done all this research, do you think we will tackle it? Oh, boy. I mean, I feel like I have to be optimistic, you know, when you're in this business. And you have to believe that people will lead government. We're at a point now where we can't rely on government to do the right thing necessarily. And so whether it's student activism, entrepreneurial activism, whether it's communities leading the way, I think that is happening. The question is, will governments follow quick enough? And I think it's up to every individual globally to pressure government to do better. And we have to vote as if climate change is our number one concern, not the economy anymore, but we really, for our future, have to focus on climate change. Burning is now streaming on Prime Video. Eva Orner, thanks so much for speaking with us. Thank you. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.